Tom O'Brien. Good afternoon, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom while he is away for the day. Tom will be back with us uh, tomorrow. And for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with me, I kick things off for TFNN each and every morning at 9 a.m. So if you are wondering where the markets are going, turn into that show. You can always catch that if it's not playing on a radio station near you. Just simply go on your mobile device and go to uh, put, uh, type in tfnn.mobi. That's all you need to do. You'll be able to pick up that show live. You can always catch the archives of those shows on channel nine on Tiger TV. Tom and I also do a show from 10 to 11. So I go two hours in the morning. That means I've gone two hours already uh, today while Tom was away. Uh, we do a show called the Money Masters Show. That show is archived on channel 10 as uh, uh, also. And, uh, you know, folks, I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome is to help you to become a better money master. But most importantly, folks, for me, and I hope for you, it's all about being able to lead an inspired life. To me, that's what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of those tools that we need to lead an inspired life. That tool is called being remarkable. So think about it like this, folks. When it comes to meeting and conquering any of the negativity in your life, here's a question, and questions are so important. What can you do starting right now, right here today, that'll make a difference in your life? What can you do that'll make a difference in life? What can you do during economic chaos? What can you do, folks, when it comes to maybe not feeling well, maybe running out of money, maybe running out of honey? What is it that you can do? Well, let me give you the answer. You see, you can do the most remarkable things, folks. I'm talking about being able to do the incredible, the unbelievable things. And despite what seems like something that might be impossible, folks, what I know that you have with inside you is the ability to do the remarkable. So go get excited about yourself, folks. Do the things that you need to do to get a desired result, whatever that result is that you want. And you can go ahead and build any negative thing into a successful thing. Our phone number, 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. Give me a call, folks. Let's go take a look at today's markets. Can you say flat? Well, not totally flat, but if you were looking at the S&P 500, certainly flat, down 42 cents. What's that called? That's called a doji candle. And we're going to take a look at that. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, watching us live, what you are seeing here today is you had a price spread on the S&P 500, got up to the the price point of 1343.98 down to a low of 1331.50 you finished right in the middle of that session you didn't test the uh, bottom it was an inside day what this looks like to me is you have just marked the halfway move of the move down now if we're taking a look at the S&P 500 one of the things that you're looking at here on my screen folks you're taking a look at a downtrend channel that the S&P has been traveling in ever since it made a size back in April April 2nd uh, of this uh, year and what you do see uh, you see lower highs and lower lows, folks. Certainly during the last, since June 4th, you have seen a subcorrection channel. That's all that you've seen with those higher highs and those higher lows out there. Just simply going from the bottom of the channel back up to the top. It got back up to the top, tried to break out. That lasted for merely a day and a half, and it gave it back up, came back inside that channel on July 20th. Now what's going to happen? What the S&P wants to do is travel inside that down trend channel. That's what we're talking about. What it has done is made a point three eight two retracement. That is one of those Fibonacci numbers that you want to have inside your technical toolkit. We're talking about a 38% retracement going from the low of June 4th all the way up to the high that was put in on July 19th. Happened to be the last new moon that we had out there. Folks, the last five out of six new or full moons have marked short-term highs or lows in the market to the day. When's the next one, Steve? I'm glad you asked me that. August 3rd. That says that you could see the market here move down into August 3rd. Doesn't have to, but you certainly, with today being a, a doji there, could mark the uh, halfway move. What the S&P wants to do is pull back to 13, 10, 15. That would be the 0 0.618, but more likely wants to get down to the 1291 area. Maybe go and test the actual June 4th swing point out at at least 1282.55. We had the Dow finish up 58 points. Let's go take a look at the Dow chart out here. When we take a look at the Dow, 
Uh, see, here we go. We'll pull it up here. Closing up uh, 58 points. The Dow really having an inside day. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, what you're taking a look at is that little subcorrection channel I talked about on the S&P. That's what I've got marked out here for you on the uh, Dow Industrials. Now, what you can see yesterday is that broke through that subcorrection channel. Did that? What did the Dow do today? Once you break out of a, uh, once you break out of a, uh, in this case here was an uptrend, a subcorrection channel. What it, what you're going to do, what the market is going to do, is go back up there and test it. If you're looking at Tiger TV, that is exactly what the Dow did today. Went back up there, tagged it, and then just simply traded off. Now, did finish up 58 points. Did break, you know, the last three trading sessions. So finally, you know, the news I'm sure, although I haven't read it, is that the Dow will have broken the down the down streak of three straight closing the down days here. And uh, but the Dow, what the Dow wants to do, folks, the Dow wants to get to 12,395. That is the 0.618 retracement here. The Dow really has been traveling in a sideways consolidation range, anywhere from the 12,400 up to the up to about the 13,000 level. If we go take a look at the uh, uh, composite, the composite closing down eight points today. What's that all about? Certainly about Apple. Apple down 4%, 4.3% down $25.95. If we take a look at the composite here, you'll see on the composite, you'll see again this uh, little uptrend, this little subcorrection channel. You'll see how it broke through there a couple of trading sessions ago. Uh, the Dow having what? A, or the composite having what? Basically, you know, finishing up uh, or down eight points, pretty much a, a doji candle, just like we took a look at in the S&P. That means now when you take a look at from bottom to top, we're talking about going from the June 4th low out there at the 12, at the 27, 26 area, all the way up to the high put in on July 26. What you will see, like the S&P had gotten down to the 0.382, the composite showing more weakness than the S&P 500 right now because the composite has pulled back into about the 0.618 area. Didn't get completely down there. That would have been 28.26. Actually got to a low today of 28.70. Uh, a little bit lower low than you saw yesterday. What's that all about? It's coming into the swing point of uh, July 12th. Also coming into the uh, swing point from June 28th out there. June 28th being critical. Now the positive side is the high of June 28th was uh, 28.55. Oh, no, that wasn't a positive. How about that? You actually closed inside there. So it closes inside June 28th. It wants to at least go test the low of that bar, 28, 18, 19. Let's go take a look at the small caps, see what the small caps are doing. The Russell 2000 finishing up 1.5. What is that set up? Basically almost like a, a doji out here. The Russell, the weak link out here. The Russell used to be the strength on the bounce up off of June 4th. The Russell had the strength in there. Now what you've done, what the Russell has done is it broke its hammer can from July 12th. It did that yesterday. What you take a look at here on the Russell, one of the things that you should look at on your chart, if you are following the Russell 2000, you can do it on another index as well, but take a look at these two gaps that you've got in here. What you're looking for, if you're a bull and you're a bear, you've got to be on the lookout for the really the exact same thing. You're looking for either continued trends or reversals. So what you've had here is you've had two gaps. Possibility exists out here for a three-gap play. What's a three-gap play? I'm glad, glad that you asked me that question, folks. Three-gap play would be potentially an exhaustion gap. That would be where the move would be over to the downside. What has to happen there is the third gap has to be larger than either of the first two, both in dollars and percentage. You know, we'll see it. When it happens, we'll see it. We'll know. We'll be able to calculate it. You can already calculate the first two gaps. You can do that at home out there. You can figure out dollar-wise and percentage-wise what those moves were. And that way, if the third gap happens, you'll know. And what you can do is if you're short, you can close those positions and go long. You can reverse it. If you see a third gap and it doesn't qualify, doesn't qualify, just simply a third gap down. What does the Russell 2000 want to do? The Russell 2000 clearly screaming it wants to go back to June 4th. That's the uh, price point of about uh, 742, uh, 73 out there. 749 happens to be the 0.786 retracement of the entire move out there. We will take a look at some of the high volume stocks out there. Certainly, everybody wants to know what is going on with Apple. So we'll go take a look at Apple. Go take a look at the volume behind the move today. And you had conviction to the downside. Apple gapping down today. Uh, did I say gapple? Apple gapping down. I can't believe that I did that. Apple gapping down today, 31 million shares. That 31 million shares is going against the most recent swing point of June 28th. Remember we talked about June 28th? In Apple's case, it had 
10 million shares. Now, the high of that is 574. You actually finished at 574.97. The work to the downside on Apple is not over, folks. It's going to at least go test the bottom of June 28th. And I believe Apple going much, much lower. 877-927-6648. You can give us a call. King Dollar. King Dollar pulling back 46 ticks. Gold up 27. We'll be right back, folks.